Okay, so the Asus didn't work out. Uh, we're looking at the what is this? Yoga 900 and Lenovo 2-in-1, and uh, maybe that will work. Oh, I think it's arrived. Asus. Zenbook 501V. Yeah, Louise, we're sending that back because uh, the sound is really crackly out of the headphones socket and uh, it wasn't that bright either. No, we compared it to Chris's MacBook from work and the MacBook looked much better and I'm not even an Apple fan but MacBook was properly white whereas the Asus was kind of beige. Yeah. And it's so bright here that I could see us not being able to use that in the bright sunlight. So we've got another one. We went to Best Buy and uh, we've now got a Lenovo Yoga 900. It's a two-in-one meaning that it, it's also a tablet and it's uh, 512 gig of storage. It's an i7 processor. It was also an open box, so it's reduced from $1,400 to $1,000 uh, because someone opened it, but apparently they've tested it and there's a seal of approval, something, it's an open box. Some guy whose name, his name was Ricky, said this is fine. Silver, that seems to be popular. The other option is orange. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it okay. lifts up slightly. I think the boxes are getting nicer. That is the computer itself. Some oh. lovely things. Right, so what's it Instructions. Um, cable. Is that a charger or a no? Oh, then here is the rest of it, I believe. That's a USB with orange thing. Is it a USB charger? It appears to be. Oh, oh. Okay, and I think that, that is what it comes with. So it comes with less things than the Asus, but if it works, I don't care. Fewer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David Mitchell. <laughs> Apparently, to protect the battery, it doesn't provide power until you plug it in for the first time. It's in ship mode. This isn't a USB charger because it's got a little... Um, sort of dent in it on the right hand side. Right, so the orange end of this sort of USB thing goes in here. There we go. Yeah, windows. <laughs> okay, one slightly annoying thing is that the mouse pad isn't in the center of the F and J key, meaning that your hand slightly touches it. It's a Windows moment, unfortunately, so I'm sure it'll be an hour and a half. <laughs> I heard people in the office talk about a Wisconsin minute. Really? What, yes. what did they say? It, it's longer than a minute. Are they from Wisconsin? No. What's a, is, is this an expression? It, it, it is here, apparently. Apart from, I don't like it, Windows is really boring. It is, and it seems to be making it harder and harder to get Linux laptops. That, that's some of our problem, is that apparently very few brands consistently play nice with Linux. So our, our options were Lenovo, HP, or Dell. And I swore a few years ago I'd never get a Dell again after having a horrible Dell where the charger kept falling out, even when we bought a new one, because it was just terrible. So even though there's meant to be a very good Dell laptop out there, I, I just couldn't do it. We're trying Lenovo. That said, I love you, Toshiba. Please make a Linux compatible Ultrabook again. I, my, my last one was really good. It was just old. So apparently to get into the BIOS, we have to press something called the Novo button. That seems to have done something. BIOS, that's it. Oh, boot menu. Let's see if boot menu works. Ah, it doesn't have secure boot. Oh, wonderful. Yay, oh. Lenovo. Linux Mint. That's better. I mean, this is one of the reasons that Ubuntu endorsed this computer. It doesn't have secure boot. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, we, we went to the Ubuntu website and saw which ones they said work with their product. And Linux Mint is an offshoot of Ubuntu. So we thought, this is the probably. Waterproof keyboard. Yes. See previous video for review. Yes, it is good. <laughs> okay, so is that the whole screen? Yes. It's still quite small on here. For instance, I can't quite read the time. 
<laughs> uh, looks all right. I wonder if the touchscreen works. No, touchscreen doesn't work. Does it work? No. No. That's a shame because the other one did. Let's see if anything else works. Network settings. Yeah. Network connections. Uh, no. No, it doesn't have any network. Oh, that's really annoying. Okay, so the screen brightness adjuster works. Okay, an update. So the sound works on this, video works, everything works except for the network card. The, the driver for the network card doesn't work on this version of Ubuntu. It does work on a newer version of the kernel. Unfortunately, this is a live CD. We can't update the kernel because it requires rebooting and rebooting it will stop it working. So what I'm going to have to do is install the operating system properly on this. But then we've only got one USB device that can be the live CD, which is this plus an SD card. So hopefully this is going to work really well. All of the things work. Okay, so the right answer was to install Linux kernel 4.5 and the thing works. So now we have, um, as well as some um, the Wi-Fi working, the touchpad now works, and as you can see, and also the touch screen. And go like that. And it also goes like this. And there's some key combo that I don't know yet that will bring up the um, keyboard. But there we go it's also a tablet so what we're going to do is sensibly keep um, using it off this and not install the operating systems that will invalidate it but yes Jess has got a, a two-in-one tablet laptop combo with an i7 processor so after all the computing drama that we've had trying to find the right laptop and the right operating system this morning we woke up to the news that the Linux Mint website had been hacked. It turns out that the Linux Mint download site had been compromised and someone had loaded a modified version that had an IRC server running on it, meaning that hackers could get in and listen to all keystrokes and probably do whatever they like on your computer. Fortunately, the version that we were trying out we downloaded one day before the hack occurred. It was also off BitTorrent, which means that there's all sorts of checks to make sure that you're getting the genuine file rather than a modified version. But you know, that was not fun. The Linux Mint website is down at the moment and uh, they're probably just... Having a very bad Sunday. <laughs> You should watch Mr. Robot because uh, that's about hacking and uh, they're probably having that kind of day. Yeah. We happened to watch that yesterday evening, which meant that when Chris told me this this morning, I paranoidly thought all the worst case scenarios. Half the reason we got this computer was actually because we wanted one that was good enough that we could properly encrypt it. So it would have been very ironic if this had been <laughs> the thing that tripped us up. Mm. Well, we're going to carry on. There's a program called MD5Sum that you can run on downloaded disk images to verify that they're the genuine article and the one we have is fine so we are going to continue but uh, just just be careful